This is surveillance video of the fatal night. And cops believe these are the faces of Jaron Lockhart's killer. Margaret Sanchez and Terry Speaks, stepping into the club where Jaron worked as a dancer. The couple promising Jaron $700 if she would perform at a bachelor party. Friends now revealing they all actually knew each other and had worked together before, so Jaron had no clue she was in any kind of danger. He had actually, I think, would walk some of the girls to their car at night. Cops say Terry Speaks and Margaret Sanchez weren't really looking for a private party. They were hunting for a kill. And this is where Jaron Lockhart spent her final hours. Inside the couple's house, police tell our Melissa McCarty, one pinned Jaron to the ground while the other stabbed her through the heart. It's so hard to understand why two human beings would kill someone just for the act of killing them. And police say after they killed this loving mother of a three-year-old, they chopped her up into pieces. Neighbor John Slocum saw Speaks dragging the garbage bags out of the house before dawn. I don't know if there was a body in there or what, but he was strained in putting them in there, put it that way. And they were hard for him to lift. Yeah. There was at least three or four big ones, and he was kind of straining with them, dragging them. Well, it's interesting that you mention this because there was not one shred of evidence found in the home. It was completely wiped clean. Yeah, you can smell the bleach from over there from to here. Even before that night, Slocum stayed as far away from his neighbors as possible. He gave off a lunatic vibe. I mean, that guy, I thought he was sick. You know, because how do you do jumping jacks in the middle of your yard in your underwear? and howling and screaming. And I'm like, this guy's crazy. And I like him, said, we gotta watch this knucklehead. I said, yeah. Later, pieces of Jaron's hacked body were thrown from a bridge and would wash up on a beach 60 miles away on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. There's always a reason, you know? There is no reason for Jared to be dead, none. She wasn't upset with them. They weren't upset with her. It's hard to believe. They just killed her just to be killing her. They probably had, you know, some sort of arousal or some, some unbelievable satisfaction from doing this. At first, Commander Grannon threw out a wide net of theories, but none so chilling as this. Could the dark world of black magic play a part in the gory slaughter of Jaron Lockhart? The actual, whether they were involved in some satanic ritual or they were worshiping someone, we, we never could establish that, but we do know that there was some evidence at the home, like an altar. Police say the night of the murder, a celestial phenomenon happened, and Sheriff Grannon believes the killer couple may have been enticed by the occult to offer up a sacrifice, a human sacrifice. Jared was not targeted because she was Jared. She was just, they needed a victim. They needed a female victim. And as cops dug deeper, they discovered a gruesome connection to another sensational murder that swept the headlines right after Hurricane Katrina. It was Sanchez. You gotta understand too that um, Margaret Sanchez was familiar with another young woman that was murdered and dismembered. My name is Margaret Sanchez and Addie and Zach were two of my very best friends. This is Sanchez appearing in the award-winning documentary, Zack and Addie, about the gruesome murder of her best friend, Addie Hall. Addie's crazed boyfriend, Zack Bowen, had strangled and chopped her up, placed her head in a pot on the stove, and her legs in an oven. Makes me believe she had something to do with Addie Hall. The couple lived above a voodoo temple in the French Quarter. Bowen admitted in a suicide letter he had killed his girlfriend and then jumped five stories to his death. And she would always just tell me, like, look, don't let a man rule you. She was like, you decide what you want in this life. And cops claim when it came to Jaron Lockhart's murder, she was cool as a cucumber while claiming her innocence. You were speaking to someone who had just taken herself way beyond what's real, you know? What do you mean? She knew what she had done was wrong. But cops have a lot of legwork to do before they can put either behind bars. There was no DNA on the body parts or weapon or at the scene of the crime, and their car had been scrupulously bleached clean. I mean, these people, were, they weren't like they were insane or 
mentally disturbed of some sort. They, ju they just wanted the sheer pleasure of killing someone, you know, and they'd done everything they could to cover it so they could go on. And but what Margaret Sanchez didn't know was her boyfriend's real name. Terry Speaks could fill a phone book with aliases. His own girlfriend knew him under the fake name of Alan Rice. Sanchez also didn't know Speaks had been wanted for failing to register as a sex offender. Cops threw him back in federal prison. He wasn't going anywhere soon. And it took us nearly two years, you know, to even get to the point where we could prosecute him. Now in custody, Speaks tells cops he had nothing to do with Jaron's grisly murder. We didn't okay. do anything. And that's that the real reason. In my head, God's looking out for me. And he conveniently suffered from amnesia. You got me then. <laughs> y'all got me. Y'all, y'all, y'all got. Got me baffled because I remember none of that. What do long. you remember that night? Dude, I got so many nights that are the same thing over and over and over. Well, I do That too. are so insignificant that I don't even think about them anymore. Speaks was also getting off on all the notoriety. In one recorded jailhouse phone conversation, he boasts, was I big on the news and all that? I was like just as big as the guy who did the Colorado bombing. So how did the deadly duo finally go down? emails. In fact, hundreds of them sent back and forth from Speaks in prison to Sanchez on the outside. One from an angry Speaks in prison reads, you're the one they'll fry and not me. Then he writes, remember the boots? Remember the panties? Do you remember what you were wearing? Shall I go on? And he threatened to, as he put it, go to the man. Threatening her meaning, if I go down, you go down? And she got married. There was some damning information there. He became upset with all of it because Morgan had indicated that she was go she had found someone else and she was going to get married. And she starts reeling him back in, you know? I love you, that kind of thing, knowing that she's got to stay on board with him so he doesn't give her up. Speaks briefly represented himself at his own trial. Still, state prosecutors decided to ditch the connection to black magic. We believe to be the motive with the Venus transition. It, it was avoided because we couldn't prove it. In the end, Terry Speaks is found guilty of second-degree murder and sentenced to 100 years in prison. Margaret Sanchez pleaded guilty to charges of manslaughter and obstructing justice. She's serving 40 years. I'm fully, I fully believe that had we not been able to arrest them and put them in jail, that it would happen again. Justice, maybe but small consolation to a little girl who lost her mom at just three years old.